Good morning, greetings, everyone. Um, thank you very much for being able to attend our YIELD event for the Dyson School of Arts and Science. My name is Rob Medrano. I'm the Director of International Admission here at Pace University, and I'm very happy to be able to meet with many of the students, granted through this medium virtually, but uh, it's a great opportunity to be able to learn more about our Dyson School and about the benefits and the return on investment regarding um, career services and everything that the time that you're putting in while you're here at the university, what you're going to get out of it. So today you will be hearing a little bit about some housekeeping um, tips for admissions, but more importantly, you're going to hear from our career services office, from the Dean of Arts and Science, and then followed with uh, question and answers from our student panel. So couple of things to proceed. You've been accepted. Amazing. Congratulations. Uh, but now the next steps that you would like that you should do is to submit your deposit. So on the screen, you will see there is a hyperlink. And using this hyperlink will direct you towards uh, submitting your deposit. So you can see once you click on that, you'll see a screen that says deposit now. It's very similar also for our postgraduate students. Once you submit your deposit, then you will uh, secure your spot in the class. The next question that many students always have is in regard to the I-20 documentation. So again, here is a hyperlink that you will be able to use to click on to be able to um, submit your next step. So that is followed by uh, submitting your affidavit, which is on the clicking on the link, and as well as then submitting banking documentation showing sufficient funds for the year and so forth. So once you submit those documents, then we will be able to process the I-20. We have been sending them out electronically. You will receive it through your um, admissions portal. And then from there, you will be able to uh, settle, uh, excuse me, schedule an appointment for the embassy. So we will have these links up again at the end of this presentation. And as well, as I said before, it is being recorded. So you will be able to uh, utilize uh, the video to click on the link. So now what I would like to do is to introduce Ms. Phyllis Mooney, who is our liaison and our wonderful person in career services, to be able to discuss more in terms of what career services is doing for students and in terms of return on investment. Phyllis? Thank you so much, Rob. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It is uh, my honor to be here with you today. Um, congratulations to everyone on your admissions to PACE. Um, I wanna share today with you how what, what you can expect when you come to PACE University in terms of your career support, all of the wonderful career support that you will receive. Next slide. Okay, let's start with outcomes. So how does Pace University's postgraduate outcomes compare to the national average? Well, for the past five years, our overall employment rates have been 10 percentage points higher than the national average. And that includes when we compare ourselves to some of the, um, the, the top tier universities and all of the Ivy League universities. So that it's extremely impressive. And that is really attributed to um, our mission at Pace, which is opportunity. Everybody's very, very outcomes focused. And that is, um, and, and the results of that, um, that focus is in our graduation outcomes. How do Dyson International students do? Um, they do extraordinarily well. For the class of 2019 and also for the class of 20, uh, 2020, uh, we know that our, um, our Dyson International students um, were employed or going on to graduate school um, within six months of uh, within six months of graduation. That's 88% of that, the class of the class of 2019, and 84% of the class of 2020. And they're also reporting um, their average full time salaries of just under 53,000 uh, American dollars a year, which is really really fantastic. 
And where are our Dyson International students going? The class of 2020 has, has, has been um, graduating to some amazing industries in a great variety of industries, including arts and entertainment and media, uh, financial services, healthcare, pharmaceutical, government, consulting, research and development, manufacturing, mental health, and social sciences. So there's a great variety of opportunities in a variety of industries, um, in a variety of industries for our Dyson International students. And here is um, just a, a sort of a snapshot of some of the sample jobs and the um, employers of that recent classes of um, our Dyson International students, um, the jobs that they went into after graduation. And you'll see we have a really um, really great variety here. Um, we have a, um, a Dyson International student a bi um, took a, a position as a biologist in a pharmaceutical company. Um, we also had a someone recently accept a position as assistant director and choreographer at an entertainment company. And then um, you also see here a research specialist at Weill Coronel Medi uh, Medicine. Um, one of the healthcare leaders um, in the world. And meet Pooja here. She was an economics major who recently accepted a position as an analyst at JP Morgan Chase. Very, very impressive. And it's no secret at Pace. How do you land a great job after graduation? Well, it starts with internships. Um, just last year, nearly 9,000 Pace students uh, reported to us that they completed um, an internship or a similar experience uh, while they were um, at Pace. And 81% of those um, internships were paid. And very, very recently too, um, actually it was just about a few weeks ago, we introduced micro internships um, opportunities um, to Pace students, which international students can also take advantage of. So that's been really, really a fantastic initiative and opening up opportunities for all of our international students um, to, to have more work experience um, while in the United States. And meet Renouk. Um, he is uh, he's a recent graduate, um, also an economics major. He did several internships while he was at Pace, including at RLS Management, Scotia Bank, Emigrant Bank, Playfair Planning Services, and he's now an associate analyst at Moody's Investors. And here is also a snapshot of some really, really great internships that Dyson International students have completed um, this past year. You'll see we had a foreign affairs intern at the Council on Foreign Relations. Um, we've had a social media intern at a, a magazine, a policy intern at New York State Senate. And we also had an International Council of Psychologists intern at the United Nations. So there's just these tremendous opportunities um, in, in a variety of, of industries and companies, just really just absolutely phenomenal. So how do we achieve such great outcomes at PACE? Well, it starts with our mission. Everybody's rowing in the same direction, right? We help every student find a great job and build the foundation of a successful career, no matter who they are, who they know, or what their major is. We know that our international students have unique interests and needs. So what we've done at PACE is develop an, what we call the INSPIRE program. INSPIRE stands for International Student Professional Readiness Education, and it's a, an immersive career program required for all new international students on F-1 visas who wish to work in the United States under CPT and OPT. So we require that you go through this program, which is really a great thing. Um, it lasts about a semester long, the first semester that you're at PA PACE, and it includes in-person and online workshops, um, career panels and networking events, an international career fair. And what we're doing that first semester um, in that program with our Dyson International students is building that strong foundation, 
foundation. So you're ready to go out and apply for internships that spring. Be successful at it, be confident at it, and be able to successfully compete um, for all of those um, amazing opportunities that we're going to um, bring to you. Um, so in this program, you can expect um, how to write a an American style resume, work on your 30 second pitch, interview skills, and of course the ever important job search strategies. Once you've completed the INSPIRE program um, and you graduate from the readiness program that am after that fall, um, then you're ready that spring to start meeting employers and um, interviewing, applying and interviewing for positions. We have this amazing employer relations team in career services who brings thousands of employers and opportunities to PACE each year through targeted outreach programming and technology. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of our technology, we invest a lot of um, we invest a lot at PACE into the state-of-the-art technology, and we are licensed to use um, one of the greatest platforms in the industry. It's called Handshake. It's a comprehensive career management platform. And just last year, um, PACE University um, posted over 60,000 jobs and internships on Handshake just for PACE students, and that was um, 10,000 employers posted those positions. And this was even in the, in the pandemic. Um, we were able to bring in that much op that much opportunity, and many of those opportunities were for remote internships and jobs. And we're very, very proud of that. Also, we host lots and lots of employer info sessions. We call them spotlights. Just last year, we hosted over 100 of them. We did them all virtually through Zoom. Um, they were absolutely fantastic and they were very very successful many of um, our dyson international students received um, opportunities through those spotlights and you can see here just a sample of some of the great brands the great names of employers who participated in these spotlights what you can expect from these spotlights and by the way we hold these spotlights all year long not just in semester we do them winter break we do them all summer long we hold several of them a week they're constant they last about an hour long we have um, the employer uh, comes on um, either in person or this year it was through zoom they do um, they they do a presentation of their organization what the opportunities are presently um, <clears throat> what their application process is what the timelines are they talk about their culture and then there's an opportunity for you to network we do breakout rooms you can practice your pitches with these employers and then apply following these events they're so successful and um, the students really really love them and like I said, we have um, tr tremendous representation of a variety of, um, of, of employers and a lot of the, the biggest um, internationally known brand employers. We also do lots and lots of career fairs. Last year, we did them all virtually. We did them on the Handshake platform. They were hugely successful. We do um, a big fair every semester where we get over 100 employers at that one. And then we do a lot of boutique fairs, including um, one for multimedia. We did one for nonprofits and governments. Uh, we did a, uh, a career fair for science majors. And we also do a career fair just for international students. So every um, employer who participate in that who participates in that fair is specifically looking to hire international students under CPT and OPT. And of course, we do tons of panels, and we have our world class on campus recruiting program. Um, just uh, last month, a few weeks ago, we had this amazing uh, panel, we had eight very successful um, PACE international um, alumni, international student alumni who are living and working in the United States, very, very successful. And we brought them on um, 
uh, to, to celebrate the students. And there was 90 students who graduated from um, our INSPIRE program um, to just recently, and that was for them. And it was just absolutely fantastic. But we do lots and lots of events like that, networking events um, for our international students. And also, um, and most importantly, so how does this all happen? Well, it's the team. You know, I, I shared with you that everybody is rowing in the, in, in the same direction. Um, the, the, we have this highly diversified staff that is very mission driven and outcomes focused. Um, we, we work with you from day one um, and, and, and help you every step of the way until you achieve that career goal of yours. Um, we're made up of, of, of a team of experienced professionals, many from industry backgrounds. Um, I've been with PACE now for 10 years, but prior to joining PACE and in this role, um, I'm, I'm a practice, I was a practicing uh, attorney and I spent 20 years um, on Wall Street. Um, there's many, many of my team members um, with similar um, stories. And for example, we have um, we have an uh, industry expert in, um, who spent many years in the tech industry as an executive. Um, somebody uh, we have a media um, professional. Um, we also from the advertising industry. So they give you all of that insider's knowledge and that support. Um, having having had that all those years and all of those connections um, for having um, spent that time previously in, in those professions. Each of the five schools at Pace has a dedicated career counseling team and a placement specialist. So we have a team of career counselors and folks that also do the employer development and a placement specialist just for Dyson. And each team is is an expert on all of their school's majors and their job and internship trends. So you're gonna get a lot of special attention, um, a lot of focus. You're gonna get a lot of very, very focused and expert support um, as a Dyson student. So what can you expect um, from your Dyson career team um, when you arrive at Pace? Um, well, you'll be working with first with your um, career counselors as you, as you complete the INSPIRE program. Um, then after you um, complete that part of the program, you'll be working very closely with them in building a strategy um, with the placement specialist to identify the U.S. employers of various sizes and across multiple industries that have CPT and OPT opportunities for you. Um, and that would be in the private sector, the nonprofit sector, the government sector, and also there's on-campus opportunities. Then you're going to be prepared to meet numerous employers, um, PACE alumni, through all of those events that I've just described to you that our employer relations team put together. And then you will, you will be able to apply, interview, and land each of your internships and ultimately your full-time job um, under OPT after graduation. And you'll, with confidence, you'll be able to approach this all with such support and confidence and continued support while you're, while you're in these positions. Um, and I just, I, I, I do hope we, we, keep in, we keep in touch before you, uh, you come on campus. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at careers at pace.edu. I also encourage you to follow um, Career Services on Instagram at, at PACEU Careers. And also if you have a LinkedIn account, um, you can follow our page. It's the Career Services at Pace University uh, Career Services page. Um, there's tons of information. We post every day about all of the opp new opportunities that have come in and all of the exciting programs that we're putting on. And also there's, I have a, 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 a very recent update. Um, this is for our deposited students please stay tuned. Um, you'll be receiving an email um, very shortly from the admissions team regarding a new career services initiative, and that is um, our pre-inspire program. Um, you will be able to part 
to get started on the INSPIRE program before you even come to campus in the fall. And um, we'll be working with you virtually. So look for that email. Um, I hope that you register for that and then you get to meet us and work with us um, before you even get to campus so you can get a leg up on your career development. Um, thank you for your time today. Um, again, please, if you have any questions and want to keep in touch with me, um, careers at peace.edu. And so right now, I'd like to introduce um, the Dyson Dean, Dr. Grimes. Good morning and good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are. Phyllis, thank you so much for that excellent presentation. And thank you for the introduction. I hope that everyone's doing well today, wherever you are in the world. We're excited that you're now connected to Pace University. And we are looking forward to helping you prepare yourself for the next step in your life. So welcome to Pace once again. Welcome to Dyson College of Arts and Sciences. My name is Dr. Tresmaine Grimes and I'm the Dean of the Dyson College of Arts and Sciences and also the Dean of the School of Education at Pace. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We are looking forward to meeting you uh, in the fall. So let me tell you something about Dyson so you'll know about this particular part of the university. Dyson is part of over 100 years of excellence at Pace. And what we provide the college is the foundation of liberal arts and sciences. What you need to know about liberal arts and sciences is that they are the foundational skills that every employer wants, no matter what the field, no matter what the profession. The things that you learn in Dyson give you a strong foundation so that you are able to think and create in whatever discipline you choose. Dyson currently has 60 majors and 57 minors. So we have a tremendous amount to offer. And we are, I must say, the largest of the schools at Pace. Um, several thousand students are a part of the Dyson community. Um, and that's because we have a tremendous amount to offer here. We are innovative. We believe in excellence, especially at the graduate level. So any of you who are here because you're interested in a graduate degree, we provide in Dyson excellent graduate degrees in a variety of subjects, including psychology and environmental studies and others as well. But I wanted you to know that the graduate uh, training here is outstanding and prepares you for your career. We provide students with a wealth of experiences both on and off campus. And what's important about that, as you already heard Phyllis say, is that it prepares you for the workplace. It prepares you for life. So we're really proud of our Dyson programming, uh, both in and out of the classroom. So what are the academic areas? What are the places where you could study? Um, I hope all of you have a plan, but if you don't, I hope this will give you some ideas about the kinds of things you can study in the Dyson School of Arts and Sciences. For those of you who are creatives, we have the arts, we have creative writing, fine art, film and screen studies. Um, we have Pace Performing Arts, of which we are extremely proud. That is a nationally recognized program that prepares people for artistic careers. We also have the humanities and communications and communication meaning speaking to other people, meaning um, media communications. Um, so a variety of ways that people communicate with one another and understand the ways that people communicate with one another. Offering English, uh, history, the traditional foundational skills in the arts and sciences of philosophy and religious studies. We have a very strong social and behavioral sciences area in Dyson with majors such as criminal justice. And I must say, um, for those of you who are interested in social justice or things of that nature, your, your students of politics, your students of the world, um, this major criminal justice, political science, those are two areas that would definitely be of interest to you. Um, we have a brand new chair in criminal justice who has energized um, the field and, and is able to describe many of the disciplines, many of the new 
uh, concepts within the field of criminal justice. Um, and so I think it would be extremely interesting for those of you who have that interest. We have economics and you saw from our last presentation that our students who major in economics do quite well and they find careers here in the United States. Environmental studies, extremely important as we see the world changing um, to understand the environment and how we can help support it for the future. Psychology, which is my own area, um, always necessary to understand human behavior and mental processes. We provide that here both on the undergraduate and undergraduate level. So you can complete not only a master's degree at Pace, but also a doctoral degree in psychology. We've got sociology and anthropology, women and gender studies, and within that peace and justice studies. So there is a variety of majors within social and behavioral sciences that might be of interest to you. And of course, the foundations of STEM, mathematics, biology, chemistry, uh, forensics. And for those who are interested in careers in the medical field, we don't have a major, we have an advisement system because we've learned that students can major in a number of subjects and still succeed in medical school, but they need advisement as undergraduates. So we have a special team of people here, faculty who help students who are interested in becoming physicians so that you have the right path while you are an undergraduate. So I said path on purpose because PACE is a place where we envision you going down a path from the time that you enter until the time that you leave us with your profession in hand, with your degree in hand, um, with Phyllis's team working behind you, we see the path from the day that you enter until the day that you leave us. Um, we want you to have a clear trajectory about where you're going and what you're going to be doing. And in order to do that, we integrate our theory in the classroom, our professional experiences through outside internships, working with Phyllis's office, those all lead up to your success at the end of the path. And so it's very important to us that you are not just engaged in the classroom, but that you have the skills, as you've already heard, that set you in position to succeed in your professional life. We also believe that an important part of professional and personal success is that we are never separated from the world in which we live. Civic engagement at PACE means that we ask each student to find a way to participate in the world around them. We do that through our Center for Community Action and Research. And that's a unique part of a PACE path experience. You will have the opportunity to work in the community, to learn about the community, and particularly for students who are coming from other places in the world. That's really an important thing. You need to learn about this culture. You need to learn about the many, many, many cultures within this culture and how you would be able to interact with them. Speakers come in, events are held. And so it's a really important part of the PACE path. Another very important part of the PACE path is research. We know that students need those research skills specifically for graduate school, but also for the workplace. Many employers will expect that during your undergraduate career, you would have gained some basic research understanding and experience. The good thing about PACE is that faculty here are invested in helping students have those research experiences. And so there are many, many faculty members who engage students in their work. Many of them have funded projects and so you are able to participate in some really groundbreaking and important research work. We have, I just spoke yesterday with a faculty member who's doing work um, internationally in Belize. And so that kind of exchange of ideas and working with different faculty members, extremely important and extremely beneficial to every student. For those of you who are coming as undergraduates, we want you to know that you can also complete your graduate degree here in some areas. There are combined degree programs which allow you to walk through both an undergraduate and a graduate degree in five years. 
the benefit of that is that you save some money um, instead of having to do four years and then another two years in grad school, you're able to combine your degree. Um, and that really provides a service to all students. Um, it's accelerated time and it's also a savings benefit. Career services, as you've already learned, is the place to go so that you can get your path uh, leading you to your first position post uh, graduation. Um, looking forward to that. Um, I think every student comes looking forward to that. And we want you to think about that from day one, as Phyllis said earlier. So we wanna highlight for you, one of our Dyson students who is making a difference. We feel in Dyson that one of the most important things you can do is actually impact the world around you. There is a benefit to going to college, to having a university experience that you can share your wisdom with others. And so Jonathan, who's here on the slide, is an example of a student who's a communications major. He took his interest in communication and leveraged it during the pandemic to work at an agency where he could help other people who were experiencing crises because of the pandemic. It's been a rough year all over the world, as we know, because of COVID-19. But we've still found ways in Dyson and at Pace to make a positive presence, a positive impression on the people around us. To me, that's the thing that makes Pace stand out, that we encourage you not just to learn, but to serve and to serve those around us who could be suffering even more than we are. Tough year for everyone, but the agency that Jonathan worked in allowed him to help people from New York City who were going through crises because of the pandemic. An excellent opportunity for any student. Um, we hope the pandemic will go, but we certainly wanna encourage you to continue to serve those around you. One really important part of Dyson is our advising staff. The advising staff has a specific role in the lives of international students in that they're going to help you stay on track. As you know, you don't just need to stay on track in the classroom, you need to stay on track with all of your visa requirements. The advising staff in Dyson is extremely knowledgeable about how to do that. And so they'll help you with every aspect of your life while you are a student at Pace. They'll make sure you're doing what you need to do academically so that you don't have any difficulties with your eligibility. They'll make sure that um, you continue to stay on course with your academic work. Um, they know all of the special rules and regulations that are required for international student populations. And so the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you know your advisor and that you remain in constant contact with your advisor. They will help you review your transcripts and make sure that you're taking the right classes upon entry into the institution. They're going to make sure that um, you are doing everything that you need to do to be a part of Inspire and every other part of the university. In other words, they are your access point. And so the advising team is very proud of their work um, and work very hard to ensure that our international students are on point and doing well on the PACE path. So I wanted you to see who those people are because you'll hear some of these names and they will ring a bell once you get to uh, PACE, you'll say, oh, I know these people, they've been in communication with me um, since before I even arrived. The person who is directing the advisors for Dyson is Ms. Heather Calchera. She's an assistant dean, and she works in both the New York City and Pleasantville campuses. Um, and so you'll see the names of some of the advising staff there. There's a different team. Choate House is in Pleasantville. It's a pink building that's on our campus. And in that building, we have three advising staff, including one for graduate studies. 
um, graduate students, I should say. And then we have another set of three or four actually in New York City in 41 Park Row. Um, those folks uh, will be your contact. They'll be lifesavers for you. So please take a look at those names. You will know who your advisor is um, long before I think you arrive on campus. One of the things we want to make sure that you know is how to make this work. So going to college, going to university is an extremely important part of life, but sometimes people don't know what it takes to succeed. All of you know what it takes to succeed because you've come this far and you're coming to an international institution for your college experience. We just remind you that coming to class, coming prepared, reading ahead, if there are any issues, speak with your professor. In some places in the world, you're not really connected with the people that teach you, but at Pace, we're extremely proud of the fact that your faculty want to talk to you. So if you get here and you're struggling with anything, please make sure you speak to your faculty. They would be happy to assist. Um, get to know your faculty. That, that's a really important thing because they're gonna wanna write letters of recommendation for you, for your positions, your workplaces, your internships. So get to know the folks that are teaching you, your faculty members, very important. And try to get to know each other. I think Inspire is gonna help do that, but there are gonna be other opportunities for you to engage with other students at Pace so that you don't feel lonely, so that you don't feel isolated. There are clubs here you can become a part of. Attend the events when we actually have some face-to-face. -face. I'm hoping in the fall, there'll be face-to-face -face things we can do. And of course, you can travel abroad, even though you're an international student. There are other places in the world that you could see. And so we encourage you to take advantage of the full array of opportunities inside the classroom and outside the classroom as well. So a final word. We're here. If there are questions and you'd like to contact us, there is a Dyson Dean email address and you'll see that Dyson Dean at pace.edu. Um, there's a Facebook page, we're on YouTube, Flickr, Twitter, Instagram. Um, if you go on the website, you can even see a Dean of me having a really great time in one of our biology labs with one of our students. At this point, I just want to say thank you again. And I want to turn things back over to Rob. Have a great day and enjoy your visit to Pace. Thanks, Rob. Dr. Grimes, thank you so much. Uh, I think the way you spoke about Dyson was exactly indicative of all of Pace University in terms of the advisement, in terms of with every student every step of the way. I think you did a tremendous job really just not just highlighting Dyson, which is amazing, but as well as kind of just a piggyback on all the other schools as well. So kudos to you, kudos to your staff. Thank you for taking care of our students. And you really kind of hit the nail on the head in regards to what we do for all of our students, but more you know, importantly right now, you know, with the task at hand, our international students. So thank you so much, Phyllis as well. Thank you kindly for really reiterating in terms of the return on investment for our students in arts and science. I think many times students feel that uh, their majors should only be in certain categories, but there's so many opportunities outside of the norm of finance and whatnot, which are great programs, but there are students who have passions outside of that within arts and science. And you also really, you and your team were really able to reiterate what we do for our students uh, in the programs for arts and science. So thank you so much for that. What I would like to do now is for our admitted students to hear from our current students to see and hear what their day-to-day -day is like at PACE and what they're going through with their internships and so forth. So I want to invite Zachary Karp, who works in our postgraduate department. He can give himself a quick introduction, but he's also going to handle the student panel. Uh, so I'm leaving it in good hands. Zachary, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the students that are on board. Take it away, sir. Thank you, Rob. 
Um, hello, everyone. My name is Zachary Karp. I'm an assistant director for the Office of Graduate Admission. And at this time, I would like to invite our very passionate Dyson current students to unmute themselves and enable their webcams. And we can start uh, the student panel. So if you could just please go around and maybe introduce yourselves, your, where you're from, your major, how many years you have been at PACE, that would be great. Hi everyone, I'm Anastasia and I'm a senior business economics major in Dyson College of Arts and Sciences. So I've been at PACE for four years. I am an international student from Ukraine. I'm one of many international students on campus. Um, aside from being a tour guide, which is one of the jobs that I do on campus, I'm also an economics tutor. So overall on campus, I've had a chance to have six different positions in the last four years. So pretty much I'm majoring in Dyson, in Pace University as well. Um, off campus, I've had four different internships at small businesses and nonprofit organizations. I just applied for OPT, so I'm looking forward um, to get my documents and get my job post-graduation. Um, on campus, I am the senior class president with the Student Government Association, a member of the National Society of Leadership and Success, and the American Marketing Association. I've been very involved and I've had an amazing experience with Pace. Um, and in the future, I plan to um, find a job, find an apartment, and live my little comfortable life. With that, I'm going to pass it to um, Doug. Thanks, Anastasia. Good morning, everyone. My name is tour guide Melissa. Ooh, April Fools this early in the AM. Hi, everybody. I'm tour guide Doug. My pronouns are he, him. I'm from Long Island. No more catfishing here. And I am a junior studying directing with a minor in film and screen studies. Um, I am so happy to be surrounded by such great people this morning, um, and I'm sure such great accepted students. And uh, to tell you a little bit about my journey so far, really briefly, uh, on campus, I've done a cappella. I'm a tour guide with these lovely people. I'm very good friends ends with T-Bone, our mascot. And uh, off campus, I've done a few internships. I've interned for a theater company as a marketing intern over the summer. I was a producing intern this fall for a company in LA. And this spring, I'm interning with NBC at Late Night with Seth Meyers. So that's a little bit about my arc so far. I'm excited to see what comes. And hopefully this fall, I'll be going abroad to Barcelona, Spain. I'm dropping off my visa application today, so fingers crossed, but so excited to get to know you all. I'm now going to pass it to the next tour guide. Hi, I am actually from Barcelona, so that's funny. Oh, oops, and you're not a tour guide. Hi. <laughs> it's all good. Um, my name is Joanna. I'm a senior biochemistry major with a minor in math. I'm a student on the Pleasantville campus, and I'm the captain of the swim team, and I'm a tutor. And like in math and bio and chem, so yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Melissa, my pronouns are she, her, and I am also a tour guide on our New York City campus. Um, a little bit about me, I major in communication studies and I am currently a senior, so this is my fourth year at Pace. Um, so just a little bit about my pace path and my experience. I, other than working as a tour guide, I have also worked as a peer leader where I work as a mentor for some of our incoming students. In addition to that, I have also worked as an orientation leader, welcoming in our freshman students during those summer programs, as well as our transfer students and international students with that. Um, and then I'm also a member of Kappa Delta Sorority, where I was able to hold several leadership positions on our executive board. Um, and then off campus, I've held multiple internships and I'm currently doing some freelance work in social media and communications, um, working with a small business in New England. So that's been a really fun experience. Uh, and with that, I am going to hand it over to Becca. Hey, I'm tour guide Becca, pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm also from Long Island, New York. I am a communications major, double minoring in marketing and digital media marketing. Um, as far as on-campus involvement goes, I do work as a tour guide, but other than that, I was a peer leader, just like Melissa, mentoring a lot of incoming freshmen. And I'm also a part of the fine new sorority here, on, uh, here at Pace, and I also did hold leadership positions as well, which is super exciting and fun to like meet friends and just gain a lot of leadership experience there. 
So that is about it for me. And I'm also a junior, I forgot to mention that. So three years here at Pace. And yeah, that's about it as far as introductions go. Thank you so much. So for our first question, thinking back on your college search, could you maybe talk a little bit about why you chose Pace University, what it was about Pace? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I will start with a fun fact that the New York City tour guides have heard like a million times. Um, Pace University is actually the only university that I have applied to ever, both back home in Ukraine and here in the United States, so I never considered any other university. Um, and my top three reasons why I chose Pace were um, first, the location, pretty obvious, but when you're an international student, I feel like it's important to stay connected to your culture and have a chance to be, when you're homesick, have a chance to go and like eat some of the cuisine, like foods from your um, culture or just go and talk to some people from your culture. So New York City is the best place for that, in my opinion. I've been able to find um, like a a lot like a society of Ukrainians is really nice. Um, so the location definitely number one. Uh, number two is the advisors. They're, they were just so helpful, so caring and nice. I remember when I was receiving emails with a lot of academic language and I didn't understand maybe all of it. Um, my I would send the email over to my advisor and she would explain what it was. So if it wasn't for my advisor, I would definitely not be at pace because I would simply miss an email, a deadline, did not understand, would not understand something. So I really liked that they helped me like that and they were always able to meet with me. Um, even though there, we had a time difference, um, they're the best, they're the, the loveliest. And then the third reason is the um, career services. We heard a lot about them today. Um, as an international, I feel like all international students, um, we need some extra support. We need some extra help with our CPT and OPT documents, um, with um, getting our social security numbers, et cetera. Um, it's a lot, especially if you're um, coming into the undergrad, but even grad, the bureaucracy of every country is very different, different and very difficult. But career services are there to help you out with any um, anything about that. I also like the many opportunities, the handshake, um, different workshops that they do. But overall, when I need help with my documents, career services are there for me to help out, as well as the international office. They're also just amazing. So that's a little bit about why I chose space. And I'll pass it to Doug, I think. <laughs> cool. Uh, that was a great answer. Uh, I also think that thinking back, Zachary, um, I was looking for a school that would combine a really nice campus community with this feeling that after four years or more, if you're in a combined program, um, I felt like I'd actually be on a pathway toward a career. And I feel like this is a really great place to sort of bridge that gap between community and building meaningful professional connections in whatever field you want to go into, which I've always really appreciated about Pace. And that was a big reason I chose it. And I'm very glad looking back at, you know, what I wanted to be doing. Obviously, you know, a little wrench got thrown in there with a little pandemic happening in the middle as it's happened to all of us. But, you know, I still feel like Pace has offered such amazing resources. The great career services, as Anastasia mentioned, that we've already heard about a lot today has still been so helpful, even during the pandemic, to find opportunities, which just shows the students' resilience as well as the faculty. So, yeah, that's why I chose Pace, a great combination of such amazing on-campus community of friends and leaders and pioneers and everything they're doing alongside really great professional connections with career services and handshake, as was mentioned, and a really meaningful journey and path towards your career. So very, very, very fortunate about that. I'm now gonna pass it to Joanna. Thank you. Um, I think my situation is a little different because I actually got recruited to swim for PACE. Um, so yeah, I had like several options, but I ended up choosing PACE also because of the location, as Anastasia said. Um, I'm on the Pleasantville campus, but it's still like very close to New York, so that's fun. And also because of the small class size, I was looking for a school that didn't have like 100 kids in a class. And also because of the research opportunities, I've been doing research with the professor for the last like year and a half, and it's been so great. Um, 
So yeah, I'm gonna pass it to Melissa, yeah. Thank you, Joanna. So to answer uh, why I chose to come to PACE, for me, it was similar to Doug, um, the tight-knit community of students, faculty, staff that I saw when I came to visit PACE. Um, all of the students are so motivated, so driven, are really doing amazing things. And that's a really inspiring community to be a part of because it inspires me to go out and be my best self and pursue all these opportunities. And then with that, I think that as a university student, um, with those cl small class sizes and just with the dedicated advisors and mentors that you have access to at the university, I think that you also receive a lot of support as a student, which I think is important, especially in college, to have someone that's there to sort of help guide you throughout those four years, to uh, make sure that you're taking the right classes, to ensure that you're going out for the right internship opportunities, and that you're really shaping your pace path in a meaningful way that is going to be advantageous and beneficial to you in whatever you hope to do after you graduate. So I found in my experience that with all of the support and help that I received, um, whether it be from my advisor or from um, a professor or from other mentors that I've developed and relationships I've built with other people at the university, um, I've been able to really build an experience um, that I've been super proud of and that I'm now ready to go out and start looking for those full-time positions. Uh, so with that, I also just have loved the community too. Um, so yeah, that's my answer. And I'm gonna pass it over to Becca. Thank you, Mel. I have to say, I honestly agree with everything that you guys have been saying. Mel and Doug, I have a very similar um, reason why I chose Pace to you guys. Like the tight knit community made me just feel like I really wanted to choose this school. The location as well, being that it still is in a city, but it's all the way downtown in the financial district kind of gave it a more quieter feel and I felt like I wasn't always in the hustle and bustle of the city sometimes after um, general Wall Street hours, the, the downtown financial district area seems more a little bit quieter and all the pay students just hang out around Seaport and other like locations around Pace and I just felt like I still have that tight knit community given that I'm still in a city campus and also all the internship opportunities that I have seen at this campus too. Um, we're so again close to Wall Street so I've seen so many business and economic majors get internships right around there. So I just think location and the tight community was a great reason why I chose PACE. Thank you. I am going to combine the next two questions. So if you could talk a little bit about what your favorite class has been so far, or maybe your favorite event that you've participated in on or off campus. Sure. Um, so for me, I'll talk about the um, event portion. So as I mentioned before, I'm a member of American Marketing Association and I am an economics major. So um, networking is important for every major, but I felt like for me, it was super important to network. And um, as part of American Marketing Association, we did a lot of networking. So for example, one time, not one time, we do this all the time. It's just the, the one that I remember. Um, we had an employer come in and give us um, not like a speech, it was like a conversation, tell us about what skills are um, good to see in the market, what we could do to improve our resumes, to make them better. Um, he was talking about how to uh, make the interviewer interested in you, um, et cetera. Of course, it sounds like all of those are pretty basic and like you can learn them on your own, you, no. The employer was super nice and super helpful. He gave us a lot of important information. And then we actually got a chance to, um, come up with a presentation and present it at the employer's office and a couple of us got internship offers on the spot so it was an amazing experience not only did we learn but some people also got internships so it was really good um, and that that's something i like those employer spotlights um, people coming in all the time to take a look at pay students and decide who they want to hire um, i really like that um, i will let dog tell you about his class or event yeah. Uh, so I took a class last year and it was called clowning, <laughs> which probably feels right <laughs> based on the vibes. Um, and it was insane. It was an acting class and I'm in the School of Performing Arts and it was ridiculously hard. And we worked in like red noses. This is all completely true. And it 
tested my limits. I was going in, I was like, okay, like I'm gonna come out of like a clown car with big shoes and a wig. But like, it was a really intense acting class of how not to, you know, try and be funny, but to just kind of like be super vulnerable and let that all happen. That was by far the best sort of artistic class I've ever taken and I'll never forget it. I've taken great academic classes too, but that clowning class, it's also just like a funny thing to mention in an interview or something and be like, yeah, I took like international relations, my chemistry, clowning, and everyone's like, what? <laughs> But that was my favorite class. So crazy. <laughs> hey, Joanna. That sounds so fun. Um, my favorite class was probably genetics. I really, really liked the professor. And actually, I, after the class, um, after the class ended, I talked to him. And that's a professor that I'm doing research with. And we study like zebrafish. So it's a lot of fun. And my favorite event, it's probably our conference meet. Um, and just going to games, uh, like athletic games, I really like that. So, um, Melissa goes next. Awesome, thank you. So my favorite class that I've taken while at Pace was a class that I took as part of my major, which is communications um, called Writing for Electronic Media. And the professor for the class is one of our many, many adjunct professors we have at the university. Her name is Artie Maharaj and she is a very seasoned communications professional, actually currently working as a communications director for a company. Um, so with that, I feel like she was able to bring to the table a lot of relevant information and experience um, and just things that we wouldn't necessarily be able to learn simply from a textbook um, and things that are up to date with what is currently happening in the communications industry. Of course, with the pandemic, we've seen so many changes with that. So I'm sure that now in her current classes for that particular class, she's able to like bring in even more. And in that class, I learned a lot of like really valuable skills um, and a lot of common practices that are pretty standard in the industry of communications um, that you often don't learn until you've had like your first internship or job, such as writing a press release, drafting a pitch deck, um, what copywriting is. So it was really nice to hear about what it means to be a communications professional from someone who has lived in that role, who has, you know, climbed up the ladder, who is now very experienced and who can speak to a lot of um, different experiences within that realm. And then in terms of an event that I really loved that I attended, I actually got to attend a leadership excursion through our Office of Student Development and Campus Activities during my sophomore year, where for a weekend, we went to this um, campground in New Jersey and we did these like fun ropes courses. We went zip lining um, and just were able to learn a lot about developing our leadership skills, which I think was very helpful and then um, helping me go and pursue leadership on my own. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Becca. That writing for electronic media class is amazing, I do have to say. But one of my favorite classes at Pace is also a communications class, and it is communications of pop culture. I found it to be such an interesting class, getting to understand pop culture and how it just relates to things going on in the world today. And as far as an event goes, I personally loved Convocation, which was a first year freshman event and it was right when we all just like moved into our dorms and they just like Pace University just took us on a little boat around the East River right underneath the Brooklyn Bridge by the Statue of Liberty. It was such a fun event and at that point I was just a little freshman so I was getting to meet so many other freshmen and just mingling and making friends so it just lives in my head of a really fun event as a freshman that I got to experience. Could you maybe discuss um, your involvement or any interaction you've had with career services, um, internships, getting internships, if you plan to work with career services? I will. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as I mentioned, we international students rely on the help of career services a lot. So I've been working with them since the second semester um, at Pace. So. Um, I wanted to access Handshake, uh, which is the uh, platform that where they post a lot of jobs and internships. So in order to do that, I did a resume workshop, an interview workshop, and I also worked one-on-one -on -one with my, my um, career advisor. And my career advisor's specific 
for Destin College of Arts and Sciences. So um, she was able to help me a lot. I, I always go back before starting applying to internships and jobs to, to make sure that my resume is the best it can be and it includes all of my um, experiences because also keywords are really important when you apply to jobs what is the handshake so handshake is the platform that we have um, access to and that's a platform where um employers post jobs so um the employers who post jobs on handshake they have been working with pace students so they know how hard we work how good we are in the industry and they want to hire from pace so the probability of you getting that job use a handshake is a little higher than uh, if you were to use indeed or um, linkedin so handshake um it um so handshake is super helpful and it's a it's a great app to to use to apply to jobs um so yeah i'm i'm talking to career services all the time every time i had an internship i had to do my documents um when i looked for jobs i met with them um all the time and i'm meeting with them right now as well so yeah i've been using them a lot like i've been utilizing them to the maximum um i yeah doug is here so if you want to take over Or where we can uh, jo Joanna, do you want to talk about um, the question is for everyone, if you have had an internship, please uh, share how you have worked with career services to receive this and how has it been going? Okay. Okay, I'll go next. Um, I don't think I took advantage enough of career services for the first year and a half or so. And then, yeah, I haven't had an internship yet. I really tried getting one last year, but because of COVID, like it didn't happen. Because um, with biochemistry major, it's very hard to have uh, an internship in a lab um, remotely. Like, it, well, it's impossible. But um, I'm in contact with them a lot. They're helping me get jobs. I actually have an interview tomorrow. So um, they are helping a lot. Yeah, especially with your resume and just your your skills and your confidence. Um, so yeah, I think Melissa, uh, yeah, yeah, she's here. Okay, Melissa goes. Awesome, so yeah, I've definitely, I've been working with career services um, pretty much like since the time I started at Pace. Um, so first thing I did with them was I attended a resume workshop where they were really able to help me sort of tailor my resume to the specific industry that I hope to went and go into um, as well as like specific jobs and internships I was looking to have by the time I graduated. And with that, um, the access to Handshake was really helpful because we were able to get so many different job listings from a diverse offering of companies um, in various different areas of communications. Um, particularly, I think it's helpful in communications because it is a very broad industry. So oftentimes it can be hard to sort through those different experiences that um, you can go after. So I think it was really nice to just um, have a variety of them and then to work with career services to kind of figure out and sort of, um, you know, see like which ones would be the most beneficial to what I hope to do. Um, and then I'm also as a graduating senior currently in the process of looking for full time employment. So I'm looking to meet with um, a career services counselor very shortly just to sort of discuss those different opportunities um, and see where I may be best fit for a full time job. Uh, so now I'm going to pass it over to Becca. Yeah, career services really does help with so much. I haven't had that much experience. However, I did go recently to have them look over my resume and they really do help you with so much. Like they, I went in one time, I think in my freshman year to just have them go over my resume and make it look a bit nicer than it was. And when I say they really just beautified it up, they made it just so incredible. I honestly could have not done what they were doing myself um because it was just they did they put so much work into it they will share your screen through zoom or take your laptop and just like fix some things make it to a specific format so it does land on the desks of new jobs because there is a specific format that it needs to go through a system for so they will make sure you fit that system look all nice and pretty so that you do land the job when you get the interview so that's about it for me Douglas, you got skipped. Do you uh -huh. want to do that? Yes. Do you have anything that you'd like to add about career services? 
just really great. Take advantage of it. I went in March 2020, like three days before we got sent home, because I found out I had a Skype interview before that was like the normal thing. Um, and it was great. I got so much help and I got the job. So um, go to career services because it's amazing. That's all I have to contribute. Okay. Um, here's a question. What was the hardest part of your transition to Pace, New York, city, United States? Yeah, oh, I love this one. Um, well, the hardest part for me was the culture shock um, because when I arrived, I had this month where I was um, absolutely so excited about every little thing. I was I was living my best life. I, I was loving everything I saw. I was enjoying everything. And then after that time, you have, I personally had like a month or a month and a half when homesickness hit me, the culture shock hit me. People are very different in Ukraine and here. And um, it's an adjustment. It's a big adjustment. I feel like moving anywhere and traveling anywhere is a big adjustment. But traveling is one thing and moving fully to a different country is a different one. Um, it, takes, it, it took some time for me to become bicultural. It took, I think, like a year. Um, and the funniest thing is that in the first like half a year, maybe five, four months, I got used to American culture. I wasn't so stressed about it. And then I went back to Ukraine and boom, culture shock 2.0. So it's a very interesting transition for a person to live in two different countries. Um, it, it can be complicated in the beginning, but then you end up enjoying it. Like right now I'm enjoying it so much. It really opens your eyes and helps you think and understand people better, I feel like. So yeah, definitely the hardest transition was just moving to a different country. Um, and I will, I would love to hear from Doug on what his hardest adjustment was. Yeah, definitely a little bit different, Anastasia. It's an amazing perspective to offer. I mean, I was from Long Island, so 45 minutes away. Becca, I'm sure it's a similar kind of situation, but still, it, there is a culture shock to living in a giant city and like a city with so much history and just so much going on always, even during this pandemic, which is a really beautiful thing, but it takes some getting used to. Um, that's my experience with Pace NYC. I was really grateful that there was still a great sense of community here on campus, but just getting used to it, navigating the subway for me was a big thing that I had to do. And, um, you know, figuring out is this a good time to be walking by myself? Like, or should I bring a friend? Like all of that, like kind of classic city stuff that you don't really think about maybe if you're just traveling with your family or with a friend. But if when you're actually living here, there's a lot that changes. Like I never went grocery shopping like just for me. Like that was new for me. Like I'd usually be buying for either four other people or someone else in my house would be kind of gathering everything. And now I was just kind of doing that for myself. There are little things like that that come with any college you choose if you choose to study at a university. But I think the biggest thing at Pace was navigating the subways and figuring out, you know, where is the best areas to grab a bite to eat, all that kind of transition, which was really fun and exciting. It was never scary. It was always like filled with possibility and curiosity, which was really nice. But now, Joanna, I'd love to hear your perspective from our different sort of campus. And Thank you. Um, well, I can really relate with Anastasia. Um, like, it was a really big shock at the beginning. And more than the shock, I think that the hardest thing for me was the language. Uh, my English was very bad and I was very shy. So I was like, they're not going to like my English. Like, my accent is too bad. I shouldn't like say this. I shouldn't talk in class. But... So I think that building up your confidence from that, like it's very important and very hard, but eventually you realize that like, it doesn't matter if you have an accent, as long as you know, you are able to communicate. And yeah, I think that just getting used to it, it, it gets so much nicer and yeah. Pace is, is helping you a lot with um, getting integrated and feeling okay with everything, so yeah. Um, Melissa goes next. Yeah, so um, for me, definitely the hardest transition was just sort of learning how to live in a city because um, 
I had grown up in a pretty small town. So like coming to a big city environment and sort of having to learn to like live in that type of space was definitely a learning curve, um, especially like learning how to take the subway when I had been so used to like being able to drive my car everywhere. Um, definitely got lost a few times taking the subway, but I think that's a New Yorker rite of passage in several ways. Um, and then also just like, you know, um, adjusting to like living in an area where so many other people live and also just like learning how to take care of myself um kind of like what Doug said like it was the first time I ever really had to worry about like buying my own groceries like paying for my own things being responsible for myself and like not having that support of like my parents you know telling me like you have to do this you have to do that like you have to really develop this initiative and this proactivity within yourself to like go out and do things um, and being able to push yourself and motivate yourself. So I think for the first few months, um, it definitely was an adjustment, just like getting used to living in the city. And again, just like having that responsibility over myself. But then I think PACE really does a great job, sort of like Joanna mentioned, of integrating students, um, providing services and um, support, just helping them, students be integrated into New York City and sort of learning how to adjust to living life as an adult. One of those big things for me was um, taking the University 101 class. So if you are a first year student, that's something that you take just to sort of help adjust you to um, life on campus, life in the city, um, and just being a student in general. So that was very helpful for me. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Becca. Yeah, so just like Doug, I am also from Long Island. So just 45 minutes away. However, I feel like the second that I moved to the city and I started dorming, I felt insanely independent. I think just like that wave of independency came over me and I just felt very um, like my own person. I was doing everything just for myself, like even just like grocery shopping or, you know, touring the city just like alone just made me feel very confident and just being a little bit more independent because I grew up in a small town in Long Island. So I also would drive everywhere and always had like my parents to rely on, but I just became a very independent person, which pushed me to do a lot of amazing things and so many doors open for me as well. So that's just a little wrap up of my life in the city. <laughs> okay, thinking about this past year, could you talk about how you've been able to adapt to the new safety measures due to COVID-19? Yeah, definitely. I actually um, wasn't on campus that much. Last year, I went back to Ukraine for five months. So um, I left in, in the end of March. So pretty much I stayed for um, the, the worst of that time. I came back to campus just this semester. Um, last semester, I was working fully virtually. But um, being back on campus, um, I can really see how many different safety measures are in place. And um, we have security guards guiding you everywhere. You can't you can break those rules. I really like what they did with the cafeteria where right now we don't wait in line for our food. Uh, we just order using an app, um, which is called Grubhub. You just order, come and pick it up. Um, it's very convenient and also gets rid of um, those long lines so that we don't have a lot of people in one um, space. Um, I do like that our classes are um, online right now. A lot of them are asynchronous, which means that you do your job whenever you can. You have like a set deadline. Um, so my adjustment wasn't that hard just because I'm not on campus that much. I feel like people um, who are there more often or who actually live on campus um, would have um, a better answer than that. So I'm going to pass it to Doug. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's a transition for everybody. And I think that like, we all just have to keep reminding ourselves that, that like pace, it's not a unique situation, like that this pandemic is happening, which has helped me. Like there have been times where I've been like, oh, you know, what's happening at another school, blah, 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 blah. But this is literally happening everywhere. And the fact that pace is being so compliant with all of the New York state guidelines and, you know, being so, stringent like i always see someone like cleaning a doorknob and like mopping the floor there's always something going on at pace to keep the students healthy it's helped me to understand that this literally is a global issue and it's made me feel much more proud and comfortable with this university because the cases are so low 
on our campus. It amazes me. Like we get tested weekly as residential students living on campus and as a student in the School of Performing Arts, I'm also tested weekly. And it just amazes me to see how many tests they do and how many come back negative because there's a report every week it's completely transparent from the university and they're just going down down and down part of that i'm sure is vaccinations but another major part of that is the fact that the students are taking the pandemic super seriously adhering to all the guidelines wearing their mask so i really feel very comfortable and in the transition it's been tough at moments of course but like i said we're all going through this it's going to be tough anywhere throughout this moment, but I do have faith with how safe we're all being and with the vaccine rollout that things will get normal sooner than we think. That's what I hope, that's what I am projecting, and uh, I'm really lucky to go to a school that takes it so seriously. So yeah, we all are. <laughs> um, yeah, so for me, there was a lot of disappointments at the beginning, so like our season got canceled, graduation is online, for example, like a lot of things like that. But at the end, you understand that PACE is doing it for the well-being of the community. And as Doug said, I do feel comfortable on campus a lot, like everyone is wearing masks, I, um, things are being sanitized constantly. And I think that there has been a huge improvement since last March, like now students are getting tested like every week. Athletes are getting tested twice a week, like one's PCR and one one's rapid test. And actually, like people are starting to train again, like um, spring sports are happening. Um, so I think that like uh, the athletic department and all the pace um, administration is, is putting a, a really big effort to make sure that everyone's OK and that the cases go down. Yeah, so definitely agree with Joanna. I think like last March, a lot of us experienced like quite a bit of disappointment just with like things having to be canceled and like you know like opportunities we were excited for not being able to happen and i think the fact that pace was able to like still open up still offer an in-person experience that was meaningful to students while keeping things so safe for us um was really like a light at the end of the tunnel for me like something that you know like made me feel like okay like at least like this has like some semblance of normalcy to it and for me, just adjusting to the things like wearing a mask, doing our daily COVID check-ins, um, having the weekly test, I think it's just me doing my part um, to keep things safe for everyone on campus, to make sure that we can all continue to like have this experience, that we can all continue to do things in person, because um, I think that that's like really important to a lot of the students. And I think that, um, you know, that's something that like everyone thinks and everyone is taking it so seriously in terms of like students and staff and faculty, everyone at the university. Um, so for me, um, you know, obviously it was a hard adjustment for everyone, but I think it's also important to realize that this is our new normal. This is the way it is going on globally for everyone else. Um, and I'm just glad that I'm able to do my part and that I'm still able to have something that is like slightly normal or like at least what we used to have as our normal. Yeah, um, we are fourth in nation for COVID safety. So I honestly feel really safe on campus. Um, they do take a lot of protocols and regulations. Like Doug said, I've always seen people just cleaning, sanitizing things, um, making sure that everything on campus is very clean and sanitized. And we do have a lot of check-ins so that like no one on campus is coming in with COVID symptoms or anything like that. So I just, overall, I'm a germaphobe. So like I myself probably wouldn't be coming to campus if I didn't see it being so clean and like taken care of. But like seeing that has just made me feel a million and 10 times safer being on campus. I just know it's very clean and every, there's hand sanitizer everywhere. So I just, I overly, overall feel very safe on campus. All right, this will be our final question. What advice would you offer to students making their decisions right now? Um, I would say wherever you're going to end up, whether it's pace, that'd be great. If it's not pace, wherever you are supposed to be, wherever you're gonna be happy, um, don't be afraid to go and do whatever it is you wanna do have that conf you have that confidence within you use that confidence you have to not be scared 
in order to have the best experience. I look back at my four years and I've had an amazing experience. I've done so many things and I've met amazing people and I've had so much fun and I did well. Um, but I realized that I could have done even better and I could have done even more and I could have enjoyed myself even more if I didn't um, underestimate myself. Wherever, you, wherever you're gonna end up, you are going to kill it and you're going to have an amazing time and you're going to do a great job um, because if you, because you're being prepared right now, the reason you're here is because you're looking out for your, for your options and you're exploring, et cetera. That already shows that you have that responsibility and you are um, going to be a great student, but what you have to build up is your confidence. Do not be afraid. I remember I was afraid to apply for a tour guide position when I was a freshman I, I've been a, a tour guide for a couple of years now. And why didn't I apply when I was a freshman? It's an amazing experience. So that's what I would say. Do not be afraid. Do not underestimate yourself um, and go and do everything you want to do. Doug? Yeah, and you're y'all are doing the right thing since you're here. I see you in that participants list, everybody. You're doing the right thing by coming to events like this. It's something I wish I did more of. Um, was come to on-campus events, experience what that's like. Right now it's virtual, so there's a little bit more flexibility in that. So continue to take advantage because this is a time that's very complicated and there's a lot of schools and probably a lot of you won't even be able to see them, because especially if they're all over the place. But this is the time to go to events, ask your questions, make your checklists, do your thing. And I think that is how you'll make your best informed decision. Get to hear from the students, the faculty, everything. And I'm 100% preaching to the choir because that's exactly what you're doing. So I know it's the end, but y'all should feel so good that you came today because hopefully this is a stepping stone to figuring out like how do you choose pace, like what, what advice would you give yourself, all those kind of bigger questions. You're doing the right thing. So continue to do this. If there are other schools you're interested in, go to a panel, go to a virtual tour, do whatever you can to get to know that campus to make the most informed decision. Don't go based on what you think the campus might be or like your dream of what it could be. Know that there are people who have done what you dream of doing on that campus or, you know, all of that great stuff. Really think about that. But you're doing the right thing. We're so happy to have you and I'm so happy to have met you. I'm going to pass it off to Joanna and actually actually head to be an in-person tour guide. So nice meeting you all. Have a great April Fool's Day. Um, yeah, so I can really relate to what Anastasia and Duke said. I think it's very important to believe in yourself, to have confidence since day one. Um, I would say allow yourself to feel whatever you're feeling. So if you're, if you're homesick, it's okay. If you're scared, it's okay. But never stop pushing and never stop like trying to get out of your comfort zone because if you get comfortable and for example like if you don't speak english ever because you're scared that it's gonna sound weird and you're never gonna learn so i think uh, it's very important to value that failing it's very important it's very useful and it's completely okay and that's what's gonna help you learn and yeah if you are an, an athlete just I said, do it, please. It's so much fun to come to the to the States to do sports. So yeah, and best of luck to everyone. Definitely have to ditto what Joanna said that like when you first come to campus, like let yourself feel all the feelings because it is such a crazy time in your life, such a big transition, especially um, since I know all of you attending today are international students. And so um, definitely like it's going to be a big transition and it's okay to feel those feelings. But also, again, don't be afraid. I know everyone else has said this, but don't be afraid to push yourself out of your comfort zone and to take advantage of literally everything Pace has to offer. Because honestly, reflecting back on my four years, there's definitely things that I wish I did, that I wish I you know, took advantage of this opportunity. I wish I connected with this professor. I wish I did so many things. Um, and you know, like you have access to that. And I think it's really important to understand that like these four years are so important in your life um, and just in shaping who you will be and who you will eventually become. And so I think it's really important to take advantage as much as possible of all of the different things that PACE has to offer. Um, just like in terms of academics, in terms of student life, in terms of research, and making sure that they're also um, applicable to you. And also making sure that the experiences you are um, 
utilizing that you're not like overbooking yourself and that, you know, you are taking into consideration, um, you know, yourself and your needs and what you are able to commit to. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to pass it over to Becca. Yeah, just to like wrap up with everything, I really think, again, you should just feel what you feel and also just be as confident as you possibly can be. This is such a crazy transition. I feel you, I, me and Mal both worked as peer leaders. So like we're seeing all the freshmen transition too. So I just hope that you guys enjoy it. And no matter where you end up, I have the utmost faith in you guys to just follow your dreams and follow your heart with everything. So that's just to wrap it up. Thank you so much. I want to thank Anastasia, Joanna, Melissa, Rebecca, Douglas, who had to go. Thank you for sharing your experiences, your stories. Um, I want to thank all of our panelists. I just want to uh, reiterate those two slides that Rob shared earlier, important next steps for admission. If you have not already done so, please log into your application dashboard and um, submit your tuition deposit to reserve your uh, seat. And if you require a Form I-20, please make sure that you are collecting your financial documentation, your financial affidavit, your bank statement, and a copy of your passport. Um, we look forward to welcoming you at PACE. We hope that you stay safe. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Rob, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, Zach, I think you said everything. I just wanted to thank all the panelists that were here. Um, and I think we had a great wealth of information. You handled all the question and answers very well, Zach, good for you. Uh, and all the students here, you just really gave a strong indication of what PACE is about. I wish you all the best uh, for the seniors that are here, but you are not forgotten. You always have a home uh, with admissions and with everyone else here. Uh, for those that are again on the call, I do apologize for the Zoom blip. You know, these are just some of the technology snafus we want, may have once in a while, but I think we recovered and we still will send out uh, the recording at one point just uh, with all the wealth of information. But again, with that, thank you all. Thank you very much. Have a great, safe April Fool's Day. And we hope to see all of the admitted students for this upcoming fall. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you.